lightly I uh, I believe that God has a word for today how many believes he has a word for today yeah. huh? you know it's funny sometimes I'll go home from church and say man I didn't do very good today and that's the day the Lord's complimenting me on my sermon <laughs> so God has a word for every single person how, how many knows he, he has a word for you today point at point and say he has a word has for me today, today. hallelujah if you have your Bibles, I want to read one scripture. It's Isaiah 43 and 2. It's Isaiah 43 and verse 2. The Bible says, When thou pass through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Let us pray once again. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for your word, and we thank you, Lord, for this day. And Father God, I ask you, Lord, to anoint me to bring forth your word. I pray today, God, for you to touch each and every heart that hears this message. I pray, Lord, that you will speak through me, God. I pray, God, that I do no violence to your word. I pray that I encourage someone, that I lift someone up. I, I pray today, God, that I magnify your son, Jesus. And we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Can the church say? Amen. 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 Now, last week I preached from the same scripture. Last week, my message was titled, Keeping Your Head Above the Water. How many of us, we want to all keep our head above the water? Come on. Yeah. Hallelujah. And it seems like it takes everything that you have today just to stay above water. They talk about how the mortgage crisis and how most houses are what's called underwater. And how many knows you don't want your house underwater? Right. Come on, you're going to lose money if your house is underwater. But how many knows it takes everything that you have to stay afloat? Come on. Come on, somebody going to help me preach here today. Now, I know that some people go through waters of, of poverty. They go through waters of health issues and, and discrimination and trouble and heartache and disappointment. How, how many uh, went through a difficult time in your life? Come on. We've all faced difficult situations. And how many knows that Joe David, he knew something about difficult situations. Now, he often found himself in dire straits. Huh? How many has ever just thrown up your hands and said, I mean, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Come on, we've all been there. Yeah. Have, have you been there? I've been there. I, I read this scripture and I'm going to quote David here from Psalm 69 and when I read his words, it just penetrated into my heart. I could hear, I could hear his, his cry to God. He says, save me, O God, for the floodwaters are to my neck. Somebody do this. It's up to my neck. Huh? He said, deeper and deeper I sink into the mire. He said, I cannot find a foothold. He said, I am in deep water and the floods overwhelm me. He said, my eyes are swollen and weeping, waiting for God to help me. 
How many's waiting for God to help you? Huh? How many knows even ever present help in the time of need? Hallelujah. You know, the Bible is full of promises for you and I. That when the flood waters come all the way up to our neck and, and your feet is in the mire and you don't know how, you can't get a foothold. Uh, that when there's something you can stand upon, uh, something that will never change, uh, something that you can always bake on and you don't have to worry about it going underwater. Come on, somebody say amen. I'm talking about the word of God. Uh, how many knows the word will never change? Uh, it's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And God has promises for you and I. Yes, he does. David went on and said, he says, I have been young, and now, come on, I'm going to have church if you don't. He said, I've been young, but he said, what? No. Yet, I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. We see the prophet Isaiah had a promise, and he said, fear not. He said, for I am with thee, be not dismayed. He said, for I am thy God. Uh -huh. Come on. He said, I will strengthen thee, yea, and I will help thee. He said, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Prophet Isaiah also said, there is no weapon uh, that is formed against thee uh, shall prosper. Uh, and every tongue that rise against thee in judgment shall thou condemn. Uh, God has promises for his children. Uh, how many knows we might get our neck uh, all the way covered up uh, and our feet might be dangling looking for a foothold. Uh, but God has a promise. Uh, God has a plan. Uh, he might be wanting you to go through some test uh, or some trial. Uh, he might have a purpose and plan for you that you don't understand. But I know one thing. The last word in the book says amen. And his promises are true. His promises you can bank on. His promises are forever. Are we a Methodist church here? Come on, somebody say amen. amen. You know, at times I preached last week, you'll get waterlogged. Huh? But there's a promise that the water will not overflow you. The Bible says, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against them. Hallelujah. Now, I want, you, I want you to know, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing, God's word is shatterproof. His word is bulletproof. His word is waterproof. And his word is fireproof. Yes. Somebody say it's fireproof. Yes, it is. And his word lives and abides forever. Hallelujah. How many knows this life that we live is just a season? Huh? How, how many great men and women of God over the last 2,000 years has preached the same scripture? Huh? How many great men of God that have had their back up against the wall and said, wait a minute, no weapon formed against me shall prosper? Yes, amen. Come on. There's times when you can't get out of your mess yourself. And there's times that, oh, God has to reveal himself and walk into your situation. Because if he don't, that water that's up to your neck will drown you. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. You know, no one ever said that this road that we travel would be easy. Huh? Sometimes it seems like you go from one problem to another to another to another. Some people a lot worse than others. How many know that to be true? Glory be to God. But my message title today is Walking Through the Fire. Somebody say walking through the fire. Huh? How many knows when we come to church and we sit in Sunday school and we come and listen to the messages, we're building up our faith. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Right. Yes, uh, we come to get our spiritual clothes on. We come to, to have ammo. We come uh, to hear the promises of God and to be lifted up and encouraged. Uh, you don't want to come to church and get beat up. You want to come and get encouraged. 
Come on. Now, my scripture text here today is the second part of this scripture that I first read this morning. It says, when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Hallelujah. I got me something here. Glory be to God. How does this work? There goes my spiky hairdo. Oh, got the shield of faith I just threw down. And the helmet of salvation. Hallelujah, this is going to be tough. This thing's about 10 pounds. Hallelujah. Now, I talked to a fireman last night, as you can see. And I asked him some questions. I said, would you say you spend more time in training than you do putting out fires? He said, oh, no doubt. He said, I spend way more time training for fires than I do putting fires out. I said, uh, if you ever found yourself into a situation where uh, you were thinking about the fire, thinking about these things, he says, no, I, we don't think. We react. He said, when we get a call and I get on that truck, he said, the adrenaline starts kicking in. All the training, everything that we've went through for years, he said, it becomes a natural reaction. And we just react and we follow what we've been taught. We follow the instructions to the team because if we don't follow the instructions, how I many know oh, somebody can die? Yes, if we don't follow the instructions that God has before us, how many know if we can die? That's right. Hallelujah. Right. Now, with the proper training and the proper equipment, how many knows we'll be able to face yes, the fire? That's exactly Come on. But with the proper training, we're not going to melt. We're going to have uh, the robe of righteousness, uh, the shield of faith. Uh, we're going to be able to stand uh, and be able to face that fire and know what to do when troubles come. Uh, I mean, those troubles everywhere. Uh, trouble around the corner. Uh, trouble down the street. Uh, you don't even have to look for trouble. There's trouble everywhere. Uh, but God has some promises for you. Uh, that's why we come faithfully to church. Uh, that's why we learn and search out the scriptures. Uh, the Bible says, looking unto Jesus, uh, for he is the author and the finisher of our faith, uh, whom uh, for the chef joy was set before him and endured the cross. He said, despising the shame is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. How uh -huh. I many of Christ paid for our victory in full? Glory be to God. I've realized something over the last several years that the fires and the floods that come help us to realize how small we are and how big God is. How many knows he's a big God? Hallelujah. And the reason we come here today is to get prepared to walk through the fire. Hallelujah. Now, I want to talk about three boys. I've preached about these three boys many times, but I just want to touch on it just for a moment here this morning. There was three boys named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We find that their faith was tested, that their faith was tried, but they all stayed true to God. Hallelujah. The Bible says that the king picked the best of the best. Huh? O King Nebuchadnezzar selected only the strong, the healthy, and the good-looking men. He said, make sure they are very versed in every branch of learning. He said, and are gifted with knowledge and good judgment and are suited to serve in the royal palace. He said, train these young men in the language and the literature of Babylon. How many of those Babylon represents evil? Huh? These three young men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, were trained in the things of God. They were pumped every day about the promises of God. Uh, they, were, they were taught how to pray. They were taught how to trust uh, in the almighty God. Uh, now here under captivity, the old king wanted to take these men, and he wanted to pre-program them. Come on. Yeah. I believe that these three were chosen 
to stand tall. Come on, how many knows sometimes you go through things just so you can stand tall? Hallelujah. And do great things for the glory of God. Now, Babylon tried to change their way of thinking. How many knows the world will try to change your way of thinking? Huh? They tried to reprogram them, but these young men, they weren't surrounded by believers no more. They were surrounded by heathen worship. They were surrounded by heathen images and heathen people. How many of those were surrounded by heathen people every day? Heathen images. Come on. Yeah. We are every day. Oh, yeah. Huh? Hallelujah. But they did not come 